Good afternoon. Welcome back to the Jessica Ruth Knits podcast. I am your host, Jessica, and it is a somewhat foggy, somewhat sunny day here on the California Central Coast. Um, today is June 27th, and this is episode 23. So welcome. We have a ton of new viewers. So if you are new, um, I am so glad you guys found me. Thanks for checking me out. I hope you like it. I hope you give the episode a thumbs up so other people can find us. And if you are returning, thank you so much for coming back. Um, that means a whole lot to me just that you guys liked last episode and you came back for more. So thank you to whoever you are. I appreciate you all. And this is a podcast about knitting. Now, um, normally I live in Arkansas with my husband and we have a farm there. But I'm currently out in California for the summer to do in vitro fertilization to hopefully get pregnant. So um, normally this is not my location. I'm in my parents' house. So I'm trying to find times to record when they're not around. Um, yeah, but normally it's a knitting podcast with a little bit of homesteading thrown in. Since I'm in California, it's just knitting. I don't do any homesteading out here. So, um, yeah, without further ado, let's get into the knitting projects. Now, this week, I, it was kind of a crazy week, like a busy, crazy week here. Um, and so I, I only have one finished object, and it's an itty bitty thing. But, sorry for the crinkling. Um, I have some friends back in Arkansas who had asked me to knit them and, um, like an infant photo prop thing for one of their nephews who was going to be born at the end of July. So I thought I have plenty of time. Um, I hadn't got yarn yet. And then the baby came a month early. And so they want to do pictures ASAP. And so it kind of, I think I found out on Sunday that the baby was born and I didn't have a month to knit up this item. And so I went to the yarn shop, bought some yarn and knit up a baby hat. Um, so I'm going to show you guys what I made and so this is my only finished object and one of my acquisitions. Oh no, I didn't, I just dropped it. Uh, first I will show you the yarn. Okay, this is Malabrigo. Like that. It is the uh, Malabrigo worsted in the dark earth color. And this is what it looks like. Look at that. Pretty chocolatey, coffee-ish. And you'll see why I chose this color in just a second. So, sorry. They wanted a little bear hat. And it kind of looks like a kitten hat. But it's hard to do a bear hat when it's so teeny tiny. And to go with it, I did a little matching bear. So the picture she sent me was of a little newborn wearing a bear hat and they kind of had their arm draped around a teeny tiny bear. So I just knit this little guy in a little bear hat. Because the baby came a month early, it is on the tiny side. So I felt comfortable doing an itty bitty hat. Um, Cause I'm not worried about, I mean, they're not gonna, I'm not worried about them using it for future photo props. I just wanted it to fit the baby now. So there we go. Pretty cute. I knit the hat, I don't know, in like two hours maybe. The bear took quite a bit longer. So it was super hard to find an itty bitty garter stitch bear on Ravelry. So many of the teddy bear patterns are, um, are like super cute teddy bears, but they're the kind that maybe you would knit a sweater for and kind of dress up. Um, more like heirloom teddy bears. And then that's not what I needed. I just needed an itty bitty little one that an infant can, you know, drape their arm around or I don't know, pose with. And I wanted it to be simple. I didn't want it to be fancy at all. I just wanted a garter stitch teddy bear. And it was so hard to find. So this recipe, it's a free one and I will put it in my Ravelry project notes or project. I'll make a project page for it. Um, but Basically, you cast on for a leg and knit it, and then you cast on the other leg and knit it. Then you join them, you knit the body, you cast on for an arm, on your next row you cast on for the other arm, 
knit a few, oh, I'm sorry, Miss Nate's, knit a few rows, cast off for one arm, cast off for the other arm. So now you're back to the body stitches, but up at the head. Then you knit for like 40 rows. So it's like a super long weird head. Then you cast on for the arms and then more arms, knit the same rows. So basically you're doing it opposite of what you just did when you started at the foot. And then you fold it in half. So the top of the head here is just folded in half. There's no seam. So then you seam it up the sides. So you would seam here, across here, down here, down here, and down. And so on the other side too. Um, so it was a super interesting construction. I don't know. I mean, it turned out super cute. And then you kind of just do the ears however you feel like it. I just ran... Um, my needle with my yarn through like that and then I cinched it and gathered it and then I sewed around it and tucked them in just to kind of make defined little ears but yeah super relatively quick um the hat was way quicker but just because this was kind of fiddly um but I think it turned out so cute and uh, I hope it's what she wants um I'm just making it for her I'm not charging her or anything so um she kind of gets what she gets, but even if I'm gifting it, I want it to be what they want. So, one more time. Super cute, and I'm going to mail that off probably today, so that way they can, um, they don't have to delay taking their pictures. But my only finished object for the week, and that is because all of my other projects are uh, long-term projects. So, I guess I have one that's not a long-term. Um, Friday night at the Yarn Shop Santa Cruz, which is the local yarn shop downtown, they were doing a knitted knockers night. And so I have never knit knitted knockers. And since we are doing the baby charity um, knit along, which or um, knitting drive, which I'll talk about later, um, I've been super in the charity mood lately. So hence the baby items for the photo prop and why I said yes to knitted knockers. And it's always fun to um, hang out with knitters and knit the same thing. So I had told my parents, well, I was talking to my mom and she asked what I was doing that night and I said, oh, it's knitted knockers night at the knit shop. And she's like, Jessica, what is knitted knockers? And I was like, well, mom, we all go to the yarn shop, we take off our tops and we just knit in our bras. And she was like, Jessica, you wouldn't dare. And I was like, yeah. Like, what else do you think knitted knockers is, mom? And she was like, oh, because the yarn shop, there's like a big picture window and the table where you sit and knit is right in front of the picture window and it's downtown. So anybody walking by sees you knitting. And so she was just, I mean, like, oh, Jessica, like, please tell me that's not true. And I was like, mom, obviously I am not going to sit in my bra. I don't even sit in my bra and knit at home, guys. So I'm not going to do that in public. So I explained to her what knitted knockers was and how... If you, oh, if you don't know, Knitted Knockers is another charity and you knit um, breast prosthetics for people who have had breast cancer and have had a mastectomy. Um, so you can knit a pair, you can knit just one. Apparently the Knitted Knockers are way more comfortable than um, like a true prosthetic or like a silicone. Um, so they have, there's a certain pattern, there's certain types of yarn you can use. Um, and then you knit these, there's different sizes for whatever cup size your bra would be. And then you mail them off and they distribute them. So um, they have, like they wrote down what are the most commonly requested sizes and colors. But um, some people at the group were doing like bright, fun and funky colors. Mine is just a boring beige, um, but yeah, you can kind of just take liberty and do, as long as it's within the yarn requirements. Obviously, you don't want wool knitted knockers because it'll felt and it won't be very comfortable. So all of these are like cotton, cotton and silk. Um, I'll show you mine in just a second. But um, yeah, so knitted knockers, you just knit these little... Um, like, what do you call them when you pad your bra? You know those little things? I don't pad my bra because I would rather take away from my boobs. But, um, whatever. You guys know what I'm talking about. So, that is what knitted knockers is. You do not sit around naked and knit. I promise you guys. Um, there was even a guy that came to knitted knockers 
and we were all fully clothed. So, um, Saturday, I, so that was Friday night. Saturday night, I went to the Giants game with my parents, and my mom asked how knitted knockers went, and I was like, oh, it went well. And she's like, okay, I just have to ask you one more question. And I was like, okay. She says, just tell me the truth. Did you really take off your shirts? I was like, mom, no, like that was a joke. I promise we were fully clothed. Like we kept our bras on underneath our shirts and everybody was, it was totally G rated, except that we were knitting boobs. But uh, if that makes it not G rated, then life is not G rated. So without further ado, more crinkling. The yarn I'm using is this one. So apparently it is cotton, bamboo, and silk. And it's a DK weight, if you didn't get that from the label. Um, the colorway is just 063. Maybe amber, it says amber waves. I don't know if that's a colorway. Maybe. But that's the tag, and I will show you. So the pattern is written to knit it on double pointed needles, um, which I did not have the correct size with me, so I'm just doing it on circulars. Um, and you start at, it's called the bottom, but it's really like the back of the boob. So it's the flat part that would go against your skin. So you knit the flat part and then you kind of like turn it and then now I'm knitting the curve, the actual boob part. So this is the back part of it. And you have to leave the hole here. This is not the nipple. This is just the hole on the very back of it because they'll stuff it through here and then they'll, you leave a long tail and that way they can cinch it closed. And so that is gonna be perfectly flat. And it is a triangle. Let me put the ball down. Oh, this is the yarn. So, flesh colored, I guess, maybe. Um, so it's like this triangle here. And again, this part here is what will go against the skin and now I'm building up and out for the boob part. Uh, so now I'm just doing, I'm decreasing every row and it'll kind of make a swirl. Um, and then you'll add a little nipple on it and it'll be done. So, that's my needed knocker. I don't know what it really looks like right now, but um, because I'm not doing it on double points, I had to put in stitch markers because it'll say knit to the end of the needle and obviously if I'm not doing double points, I don't have the end of the needle right here. So this is my theoretical needle. Um, so there's two, and then this is the third one. So that would be one needle, two needle, three needle. If I was doing it double points, which I'm not. Again, these are my chaigus. I had to go down to a size three. The pattern calls for, I think a five or a six. Um, but I got a really good fabric with the three. So that's what I'm doing. But yeah, um, I cast on at the knit group, got about this much done. It was fiddly at first to get it all started. Um, now it's easy because I'm just decreasing. But um, yeah, I'm not sure if I'm going to have enough yarn to make a matching second one to have a whole pair. If I don't, I will just donate the one and I'll probably donate the rest of the yarn in case somebody at the knit group wants it maybe. Um, I think you would need two skeins or like one and a half to do a pair. Um, or maybe I'm just doing a bigger size. So maybe if you did a smaller size, you could get a pair out of one skein. But it is a smaller skein, so there's not a ton of yarn in it. But that is my, um, my knitted knocker project. All right, I've got two more big long-term projects that I will show you. Then we'll talk about our charity knitting drive and our giveaway. So, let me grab a swig of coffee. Again, I work at Starbucks for those of you who don't know. Um, I just have iced coffee, no sweetener, and the ice is all melted because this is from like two days ago. Um, I just put a little bit of half and half in it and then I stick it in the fridge and it'll last me a few days. Sometimes. Sometimes it lasts me like an hour. But, um... Yeah, so that same knit shop on Wednesday nights, we get together and we knit, this month we're knitting The Surge by Melanie Berg or Martina, Melanie Berg. Next week, we're or next month we're doing Martina Bam. Um, 
So this is The Surge by Melanie Berg. And I am using a magic ball. So this is a bunch of like minis tied together. Um, I don't have colorway names. I don't have any information on it other than they're magic knotted together. Because I, because it's knitted and the magic knots, I've heard they can come apart in knitting. And the bummer with that is a magic knot. Let me see if I can, if I'm close to one. Maybe like right here. So this is where it is magic knotted together, the two different colors. There. Okay, so what you would do is you would knit it and then you would clip these short and that knot should hold, theoretically. Now, if you are knitting something with it and you cut it and say after you wash it, it comes apart, there is no it's not like when you weave in ends, you have the, that six inches of ends that you could use to fudge, you know, to kind of sew up something if it comes apart. Because the magic knot, you just cut it really close to the knot. If it comes apart, there's no extra wiggle room um, to sew it back together. So then you either have to find a coordinating color. It would just be more obvious if there was a hole down the road. Um, and I don't know because I've never done magic knots and I did not do these magic knots. So I don't know who did. Um, and I don't know if they have a history of coming up. I don't know. So I want to be on the safe side. So when I get to the magic knot, I'm just unknotting it and then just doing a typical, like a color change. Um, that way I will have like five or six inches of ends that I could unpick if I needed to later. But also I won't have the magic knot to come undone. So I'm using my magic ball. And I'm using this green colorway. And I don't have the tag for the green. It's Shibui. Um, again, it'll be on my project page in Ravelry. Oh, and so you guys don't have to like randomly guess who I am on Ravelry. My name is Sergeant Griffs Girl. So it's S-G-T-G-R-I-F-F-S Girl. When I signed up for Ravelry back in the day when you had to be invited to it, um, my husband was still in the army. Our last name is Griffith. And so everybody called me Sergeant Griff's girl. So that was like my username for Ravelry. Um, and now I don't want to change it because it just reminds me of being in the army. We're not in the army anymore. Um, but it reminds me of when we were and when we first got married and when Ravelry was new. So that's where the name comes from. And that's why I haven't changed it to like Jessica Ruth Knits because I still like holding on to that. Um, all right. Anyways, those are my colors. Last week... I couldn't really show you the shawl because I was in the middle of a row. Now I planned ahead and I have it. Okay, I'll start it right now. This is the start of it. Then you have these little like leaf wedges. So you can see my color change happened right there. Okay. And then I think I have one more of these purple colors and then I'll do another wedge of these guys here so it is gonna be long and skinny I think it only gets like maybe a foot and a half wide um like wide from your from your neck down wide and I think it's gonna be like longer than your wingspan wide out <laughs> um because you have all these short rows and it's already pretty long I mean if I stretched it it would come off my needles so, um, I'm just at the beginning of it. So that's my surge. I'm loving the colors. I think they're going to be so fun. I love the magic ball and how it changes. Um, it just gives it a little bit extra interest in it. Now, I'm pretty sure I said this on last episode, but I just want to show you guys my edges. The pattern doesn't say anything about how to carry your yarn up the side. So, okay, first off. You could cut your yarn here and then rejoin it here but that would give you a ton of ends and if you're like me you hate weaving in ends so um then you could carry it right if you just carry it at the edge you're going to be able to see your purple on the edge it's going to like barber pull up right so we don't want that because we want it to look clean we want it to look crisp and professional so if you knit okay 
So say you've just finished your purple row and you're going to start on your green row or like your, your second green row. You would knit the first stitch with the green color. Then you trap the purple behind, kind of like you're trapping a float, but you're going to do it in between the first and the second stitch. What you get then is that purple travels up on the inside of your wrong side. So you just trap it every, at the beginning of every row. And it makes it so on the right side, you don't see it on the wrong side. It's just nicely right there. Um, so that is what I do. That is what I do on all of my shawls. If it is not an I-cord edging. Obviously an I-cord edging, you can just travel it up the I-cord and it is completely hidden. Um, this pattern does not have an I-cord edging. So that's what I did. Um, and a lot of people at the knitting group didn't know that trick. So I just wanted to share it with you guys. If you're going to do this shawl or if you're going to do any shawl similar where you are carrying the colors up the side um, and you want a nice and neat edge to it. I don't remember where I learned the trick or when or who taught me it, but that's a trick. Um, so, and you can, you can let me know if you have any questions about it. I know I did not explain it very well because I think I explained it better in the last episode. I just wanted to show you guys in case you hadn't watched the last episode. So, that is my serge shawl. Um, I'm trying to read, I just closed up the plastic bag. And I'm knitting it again on my Chigoos. These are size seven. So, um, and again, it's fingering weight, size sevens. And that is important because that will come into play on the next project I'm gonna show you in kind of a project fail. Uh, before I tell you about my next project, I am wearing, if you have watched um, previous episodes, this is my Perkins Cove pullover. I don't know if you guys can see it very well, but it fits, I love it. Um, it is in my Ravelry project page, once again. It is linen, cotton, and it has these like, okay, I stand up. Oh, you guys can see my boobs. Not really, because I'm wearing a tank top. But um, it has these like specialty stitches here. Um, you can see, okay, sorry if it's, right here is a good example. I did short rows. So see how here, there's only like one or two rows in between, and then it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and there's like a full on, this is so hard to show. There's like a full on section right there. Sorry, that was like way too much of my boobs. But, um, I did short row bust shaping so that it would fit me. Um, and I still have to put all those notes in Ravelry. I will try. Um, again, since I'm at my parents, I don't have my computer here. So everything I'm doing is on the iPad. And it's just not nearly as easy to do as on the computer. That is also why, while I'm in California, the podcast episodes will not have any notes on them. Um, they're all recorded in one piece because my iPad won't let me upload longer than 15 minutes onto YouTube and it won't let me upload, like put segments together like I can on my computer. So, um, I've got one shot to do this episode, otherwise I have to start all over because I can't put pieces together while I'm in California. So, okay, Perkins Cove pullover, I love it. Um, linen cotton, I've washed it, I've put it in the dryer, it's totally fine. Um, yeah, so I fudged it a lot. The reason I'm telling you about it is because I'm gonna take it off to show you what happened on my next project. So I'm fully clothed under here, don't worry. This is not an X-rated podcast. Okay, so my next project, I, I'm gonna tell you a little story. So my grandma um, is 92 right now and she used to knit she was never like a prolific knitter. Like she was a sewist more than a knitter. Let's just say that. She was very skilled at knitting, but she would rather sew us kids clothes than um, knit things for us. I think maybe I have a baby. I don't even think I have a baby blanket from her. I don't think I have anything knitted from my grandma, but I do have sewn stuff. So, um, but the, the point is she could knit. And they are huge travelers. And they were, now it's really hard for them to travel um, because they have like walkers and canes. Um, but 
but back in the day, I mean, they would travel two, three trips a year, you know, and international. Like, they just went everywhere. So, one time, they went to Ireland, and they went, it was my grandparents and her brother. I don't know who else went with them, but the key is her brother went with. Her brother is, like, 6'3", six, 6'4", six, and wanted a fisherman's rib sweater. I don't know if he wanted it or if she wanted to knit him one. Um, but she bought enough yarn to knit a huge, like a six foot four fisherman cabled sweater. Um, she never got around to it and now she doesn't remember how to knit. So, and even if she, if I, even if I could remind her how to knit, she's never going to knit a fisherman's cabled sweater for her brother. It's just not going to happen. Um, I, he lives in Houston, Texas. I don't even think he wants a fisherman's cabled sweater anymore. Um, otherwise, I would have offered to knit it for him, but I don't think that's high on his priority list. Um, so, the point is, she gave me all of this yarn. And I will show you the yarn. I believe it is straight from Ireland. Oh, it says Norway. Maybe she bought it in Norway. That might have been. But anyways, it is this. Daletta. I don't know what that means. Dale, Dale Garn? It says Dale of Norway. Everything's in Norwegian. It says 100% pure new wool. But everything else is in, I'm guessing, Norwegian. Um, it has a lot number and a colorway number. Well, and it has a dye lot number, so I guess it is dyed. I was going to guess it was undyed. If I put it over here, it maybe doesn't get blown out. Um, so I probably have 20 skeins of this. And again, these are little or smaller balls, but I have enough to do a sweater in my size. So I figured since she purchased the yarn to make a sweater, even though the type of sweater has changed and the recipient has changed, I wanted to knit this into a sweater, um, because that was its intended use. And what I think, if I have enough yarn left over, um, assuming we get pregnant with IVF, I think I will knit a baby fisherman's cabled sweater because I think my grandma, like that would kind of tribute to her and I'll knit it out of this yarn. Um, it would honor, you know, her original intentions. It would be full circle because it would be for her grandkid instead of her brother. Um, I just think that would be super fun. So I don't want to knit it right now in case IVF doesn't work and then that would be super sad. But um if it works, I might make it in like a larger size so a child could wear it for longer. But we'll see. That's further down the road. Right now, I have a sweater for me. So, a lot of the sweaters in my queue, and it, this is fingering weight. Um, a lot of the sweaters in my queue are striped or colored or I didn't want a pure white one. Um, or they're not fingering weight or whatever. So it was hard to find a pattern that I could use this um, and that I still wanted to wear. So what I found, the pattern is called the walk along. And I hate trying to show you guys on my phone. <coughs> Excuse me, but maybe I can. I want you guys to see how it is. Yeah, there you go. So this is the whole sweater. It looks like it has an undershirt underneath, but it's the sweater knitted in. So I'm gonna do this main part here in the cream that I just showed you, and this bottom part and the collar and like the little part on the sleeves, I'm going to do in this gradient. So, sorry, my bag is falling. Um. So it'll be this and that. I think that'll be so pretty. Um, and it'll be just enough of a pop of pink that the sweater will still mostly be white, but it'll have some fun, you know, like just a fun aspect to it. Um, and okay, let me move my phone down because you guys already saw the pattern. The pink is gecko yarns and the colorway is Shades of Raspberries. Here, I'm trying to hold it in my left hand so it doesn't glare. Like that. Nope, I'm just gonna go over here for the camera. 
And it says, a one woman shop combining color and fiber to inspire your next work of art. So it was in the tube like this and it looked like this. So I knew it was sock yarn I, and I pulled out the center here to see if it was a double stranded or single stranded. Meaning if it was wound up to knit for socks, if it's, if there's two strings together, they would be a perfectly matched gradient pair. It was only one, like a single strand. So I figured that would be perfect for my sweater because it would give me a longer transition um, since it's not paired up for two socks. Well, what I didn't see is it's wound up, it's singles, but it's two little balls instead of one big one. So not exactly what I was hoping for my sweater, but it'll still work. So you start up at the collar here and I'll show you it in a minute. Um, so I'm starting with the dark because I didn't think there'd be enough contrast if I started with the light peach. Um, so I'm starting with the dark, then you go to the cream and you knit the whole sweater in cream. And so I'll, right here I'll have dark and on my other sleeve. Then at the bottom, when I get to the bottom for that second undershirt portion, I'll start with the light pink and fade out to the dark. Sorry, I'm not trying to flip you off. Um, that way it'll end at the dark. I think it'll work better that way. So, because, um, sorry, I'm trying to put my bag down. Everything is balanced very precariously because I'm in the corner, like with the library. Um, what I think I'm gonna have to do, so I did the dark from here for the collar, I'll knit the dark from here for the sleeves. Then I will, I'm gonna have to cut and cut and paste to try to make the sections longer since it's two balls instead of one like I originally thought. So I think it'll still work because there are big enough sections in the colors. So I'll like cut out this color and then add it to here and then transition and then cut out, I don't know. I'll cut and paste it and it'll work. Um, but that's what I'm gonna do and so I'm super excited. So this weekend, um, I mentioned I went up to the city to go to a Giants game and I packed a bunch of knitting because I drove up with my sister at like eight in the morning. She had, she was going to go visit a friend in the city. Um, the game wasn't until four and so I didn't want to drive up all by myself. Um, so she drove up with me. My parents had a hotel for the whole weekend. So she just dropped me off at their hotel and I spent the morning at the hotel with them. And then we went out to lunch and went to the game. But the moral of the story is I had like a whole day in the city, lots of driving time, lots of sitting time at the game. So I wanted to take a bunch of knitting. So I cast on for my sweater. And this is how it is. So it starts out in the dark, then you do a rib. So this is supposed to look like the undershirt then the rib of the sweater, and then you do this, it's really blown out, I'm sorry. You do the sweater. Well, I don't swatch. I never do, and I probably should, and I realize that, and this is a do as I say, not as I do um, lesson, because I'm always like, oh, I'll just wing it, whatever. So my serge shawl that I showed you, I think I said I'm doing it on a seven, and it's fingering weight. So I figured a three for a sweater should be totally fine. So I cast on, I knit the, it's so dark, it's hard to see. I knit this in a three, which is fine because it, it's supposed to curl anyways. So I was like, whatever, it doesn't really matter. And then I knit the two by two rib on a three. Then that was looking pretty, it was just looking loose and floppy and but instead of ripping it out, I was like, I'll just switch to a two now, right? Like, no big deal. It's only the ribbing, which is supposed to be done on a smaller needle, and then you go up to a bigger needle, not the opposite way around. But I was like, I know what I'm doing. So I cast on, or I just switched to a two. The pattern has a whole bunch of short rows in the back um, to kind of even out how it hangs on you. And um, I'm trying to find, okay, so here's the star. So it has a whole bunch of short rows on the back. Um, it's not a pattern that you can just, 
it's not like a typical raglan where you get to the marker, you increase, increase, keep going to the next marker, increase, increase. This one has these panels. Okay, like right here, there's this panel of 15 stitches. So this is the sleeve, then you increase here, but you don't increase, it's not like a typical raglan. So you wait 15 stitches and then you increase here. So it'll have the 15 stitch panels here and here. So you won't just have a line here. I just fell. And it's on the back too. So it's, it's tricky. It's different. And that's why I liked it because it's not just a typical raglan. I feel like with a typical raglan, I wouldn't need a pattern. Um, it's kind of just like do what you do. But this one, I like that detail that goes right here. Um, but needless to say, it's not a pattern that you can just sit and knit on. Um, so the night before I was like furiously trying to get past all of the short rows so that I could just knit on it at the game and not have to pay attention. Um, so sorry for all the clinking. Okay. Like this. I don't know if you guys can, it's kind of off. these are the two 15 stitch panels and this is the sleeve here. Um, so you can kind of see what I'm talking about, how it's not a typical raglan. Um, so at the game, I was just knitting it. Excuse me. And I finished one whole skein. So this is one skein. There's the end of it. Um, when I got home, I was super excited to try it on because I want to see. So because my body shape is unique. Um, I always try things on and I just kind of adjust them as I go. The pattern for me is more of a guideline because it's, nothing's ever going to fit me like off the rack. So, um, I always have to do short rows for my bust. Um, yeah, I just have to do Amy Herzog's custom fit stuff has been a lifesaver for me. Um, so that kind of, she kind of taught me like what I need to do for my body shape to make sweaters look like they fit me and not just like I bought them. I don't know what I'm trying to say. If I buy, if I buy a sweater that fits in the bust, it's gonna look like, like a 5XL on my tummy. I mean, I don't wear a 5XL, but it's, if it fits in the bust, it looks floppy on the rest of me or it's like bunchy here, you know? Um... So, I don't know. So I always have to adjust the pattern. So that's what I'm trying to say. So, you, typically I'll just keep trying them on and figuring out, I do the math and calculate how many stitches I need and adjust the pattern. Um, so what it means when I'm following a pattern is I might start out with like the extra large size, go down to the large, go back up. So the numbers are more of suggestions to me. I just keep trying it on. Um, so I was super excited to try this on. You can already see what's gonna happen when I try it on. Um, so I got home, tried it on, and I was like, that's not gonna work. So I will show you. You see that? So this is what it's, it's gonna be like this. So these are the panels that I love. Um, this is the front of it, but this is way too floppy. Like, that is not the look I'm going for. So, I'm going to keep doing the um, the sweater is called for. So, it's going to be like that. Yeah. Um, I'm going to take out, I'm going to pick up back here with the, at the ribbing, probably in a zero. And then I will knit this portion back in a zero. So, I'm going to rip out this dark, rip out the 2x2 two two rib. I'll pick it back up, pick up the live stitches with the zero, knit the two by two rib. So I'm going to be going opposite of what the pattern said, but it's fine. It's just rib and stuck in it. Um, so I'll knit the two by two rib and then you leave those stitches live and you just change to this dark color. So I think I'm going to do, since this is a two, I think I'm going to do that in a zero. Um, that way it'll, it won't look like an Elizabethan collar because that's not what it's supposed to look like. It's supposed to look, you know, like a tight collar like that. Like it's a fitted sweater and not this big, like, neck crap. Um, kind of like an astronaut. 
Like my hood's gonna go right in there. Um, so this was my exciting project of the week, but also my fail of the week. Um, the good thing is I don't have to rip it all out. So it's not a total fail. It's just, I should have swatched. I mean, I should have guys. If you're gonna do a big sweater and you are a larger person, you should probably swatch. Um, there's my little PSA tip for y'all. So, um, I mean, I should have been able to tell from here. But I was at the game, and what was I going to do? Because I didn't have my needles with me. so And I couldn't really try it on in my seat and be like, oh, is it fitting? Um, so, I'll keep going. And I think it's going to be super fun once all the kinks are fixed out. So, that. And this is in my little Taylor S bag. Which I'll just do. Little Taylor S that Amy sweetly sent me. This bag is absolutely awesome. It stands up, it's huge. Um, it can fit my sweater in all of the company. Yeah. All right, let's get that guy in there. We'll get the little gradient balls in there. Okay, speaking of the Amy of the Little Taylor S, if you guys haven't watched her podcast, you should go check her out. She is so, I don't wanna say adorable because that makes her sound like, oh, you're so cute. Um. She is so sweet. Her aesthetic is gorgeous. Um, she's, I mean, she's a gorgeous person. Her knitting is so pretty. And she has just started, well, I don't know when she started, but she dyes yarn and makes project bags. So she gifted this one to me, and I love it. It's a drawstring bag. Her detail, I mean, all of her stitching is just so professional. And a couple episodes ago, I showed this off, so I'm not gonna show it in detail. You guys can go back and watch that episode. But she also sent us a skein of yarn for a giveaway. So this is her yarn. The colorway is a thousand yellow daisies. It is on a superwash merino sock yarn. 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon for 425 meters and 100 grams. There's her little tuck. And it is gorgeous. It has speckling in it. Oh, the light's really good there for it. Um, I keep it close. So, super pretty. There, maybe if I hold it right to it. Um, this is going to be a giveaway for our sweater knit along. Now, if you are just tuning in to my podcast, I'm hosting a year long sweater knit along. You can knit anything for adults, for children, for babies. As long as it is a human being, it counts. Not a doll, not a dog not an invisible friend. It has to be a human being that can wear it. Um, I'm drawing, I started hosting it with Jessamine of the Knitted Towel podcast. So the first quarter of the year, we, um, like one of us had chatter, one of us had a finished object thread, and then we pulled prizes from it. Now we're gonna continue the rest of the year doing the prizes on our own, um, because that way we can both have chatter and finished objects. Uh, and it's a lot to keep track of when it's when you're trying to figure out who's got the chatter, who's got the finished objects. So we just figured the first quarter we'd do it together, and then now we're gonna do it on our own. So June, the end of June is right around the corner, which means quarter number two is ending. You guys have a couple more days to get in your finished objects. Um, you are more than welcome to double dip in other um, podcast giveaways. You're more than welcome to enter in my giveaway and in Jessamine's. So you have, for the one project, you have two opportunities to win right off the bat. Um, I know a lot of other podcasters are doing the slow ass knitters cow giveaway. I don't know what it is. It's a sweater top that everybody's knitting. Like you can knit your own sweater top. Um, so if you enter in that knit along, you can also enter in ours. Um, I think it's Wet Coast Wolves is doing a fingering weight knit sweater knit along. In any case, there is a bunch of knit alongs going on right now. Feel free to double dip, but just enter in your finished objects. Um, so my Ravelry group, the Jessica Ruth Knits podcast group, has a finished object. It's under the Jess and Jess sweater together because that's our hashtag. So if you're on Instagram and you knit a sweater, use the hashtag so that everybody else can see what you're knitting. 
You can also crochet it. When I say knit, I mean make. Um, so knit or crochet is totally fine. Um, but the end of June, I will pick a, I will pick a winner from this quarter for the finished objects in the sweater group, and you will win this lovely yarn from Amy of the Little Tailor S. Um, okay, so this kind of overlaps with our charity knitting drive. And the overlapping part is if you knit a baby sweater for the charity knitting drive, you can also enter it in the sweater knit along. So you guys have like so many opportunities to win. Um, I'm just giving out yarn left and right because I, I love getting yarn in the mail and so I want you to be excited about yarn mail too. So knit a baby sweater, knit a human sweater, and knit a sweater for yourself because that's what started this whole sweater together. Um, this is the prize for June. I will share the winner on the next podcast episode. So if you entered, be watching on that episode. Um, yeah, triple dip, quadruple dip, whatever. As many knit alongs as you can find. If you can keep track with them all, do it. So that's going to be that. All right, one more swig and we're going to talk about the charity meeting drive. If this is your very first episode, um, we are doing a charity knitting drive. And what's different about this one is I'm asking you to send baby items or items for a new mom. So um, like a shawl, something to pamper a new mom maybe. Um, or socks or matching baby socks and mama socks would be super cute. Um, but we are donating all these items to the local maternity house here in Santa Cruz. And the reason I picked this charity is because since I'm out here to do in vitro fertilization, which for those of you who don't know, um, my husband and I cannot get pregnant on our own. I have PCOS. I do not ovulate. It is pretty much near impossible to get pregnant on our own. So we have tried cheaper methods. We have done IUIs which is, um, everybody jokes, like, it's like the turkey basting method. Um, those didn't work for us. So now we're kind of like playing hardball. Uh, we are doing IVF, which is a huge thing to do. Um, it's like a full-time job trying to keep track of all of the doctor's appointments, of all the shots, of everything that you're going to be doing. So um, Arkansas, where I live with my husband, there's only one clinic in the entire state that does in vitro fertilization, and we don't like them. We did our IUIs there. We don't like them. They, pretty much everybody who goes to them hates them. Um, so our theory was if we had such bad experiences doing the IUIs, which is maybe only like three doctor's visits, we did not want to give them the power of the IVF, which is like doctor's visits every day. Um, it's already such a stressful time. I didn't want to add in the stress of a horrible doctor's office. So with that clinic off the table, since that is the only one in Arkansas, our next options were Memphis, which was three and a half hours away, or Dallas, which was six hours away. We went to the clinic in Memphis. We absolutely loved it. The only problem is it's three and a half hours away each way. So to go to a doctor's appointment in Memphis, is a seven hour minimum car ride. Now, once you're doing IVF, you have to be going multiple times a week. So that means, A, you have to take time off work. B, you have to drive a seven hour road trip multiple times a week. Our truck has like 250,000 miles on it. So we did not think it would be a good option to do Memphis despite how much we loved them. Um, the doctor had said some people, you know, you could get a hotel for the week, um, but you'd have to get a hotel for like three weeks in Memphis. And the problem is since I work at Starbucks, I need to keep my insurance. So I need a minimum of 20 hours a week. So then you're looking at, okay, do you transfer to the Starbucks in Memphis and then be so far away from Tim and be all alone in a city that I don't know anything about? Or... If we're looking at transferring somewhere, do I transfer back home to Santa Cruz? So we went with that option because I can stay with my parents. Um, my aunt 
is letting me borrow her vehicle so I have a vehicle to drive while I'm out here I could transfer there's plenty of Starbucks out here Hot Springs Arkansas where my husband and I live only has one Starbucks so it would be harder to transfer to Hot Springs than to transfer from Hot Springs to California because out here there's multiple Starbucks's and there was two IVF clinics um, within an easy drive from my parents house so I had multiple options as for work, multiple options for um, doctor's offices. I chose one of the two clinics and we've been working with them ever since. So this is a long way to say I chose the maternity house because I'm out here trying to get pregnant and here are pregnant women who need some help. So it seemed natural to me. There is an obvious connection. Um, one of my mom's friends is on I don't know the board of directors so we contacted her to see what did they need what did they want she said anything would be cherished so that's what I'm going with so you guys have the free liberty to knit crochet so I don't know what you want if you want to buy stuff I suppose you could buy stuff um whatever send me things to donate to this maternity home and in return I'm gonna do something for you I was gifted a ton of indie dyed yarn and I'm so excited about all this yarn and I'm so thankful for it but I wanted to be able to share it I didn't want to just hoard it um, and be a selfish knitter I'm a selfish knitter in that I knit things for myself but I really wanted to share this yarn with you so I if you guys mail me things to donate to the maternity home I'm going to mail you back a skein of indie dyed yarn um, you will get one skein. That's it. If you, if you donate 10 baby hats, you don't get 10 skeins of yarn. I don't have that much yarn to give out. So it's kind of like a, in lieu of, or not in lieu, in appreciation of your donation, I'm sending you a thank you gift, but you only get one. So that's the deal. Um, you can knit or crochet or sew or whatever. You can create these baby items or items for new mama out of any yarn you have in your stash. They're, the only rule or guideline I would say is if it's if you wouldn't put it on your own child, let's not donate it. So if it's super scratchy wool and your own child would complain that it's scratchy, let's not donate it. But so far everybody has been, everything I've received has been absolutely perfect. So you guys are so generous and so considerate. I don't feel like I need to say that, but I've had people ask if, you know, like, can I mail something with Angora? Well, sure. Um, <coughs> excuse me. To me, Angora is super soft, and if somebody, I think these moms are going to get to pick what they want out of the donation pile. So I think if they think it would be to, if they think their child would be sensitive to it, they can pick something different. Um, some people will pick it, some people will absolutely love it and say it's so soft because Angora is incredibly soft. Others, it might bother them and so they wouldn't do it for the child. So as long as it's not too scratchy or, I don't know, if you would put it on your own kid, send it. <clears throat> um, that's my only rule. You have until July 31st to mail out your items to me. That gives me up until about August 15th to collect everything. I'm going to take a picture of everything that we've got donated and then I'm going to go donate it to the maternity home here. So um, that's the rules. Um, on my Ravelry in the group forum there is a thread. I believe I stickied it which means it should be up at the top of the thread so you guys don't have to like scroll through all of the threads looking for it. It tells um, my name, the P.O. box where you can send it to, it gives you all of the information. The It talks more about the home that we're donating it to. Um, so if you have any questions about the charity knitting drive, go check out the forum on the Jessica Ruth Knits podcast group on Ravelry. And if your questions are not answered there, then go ahead and contact me. Um, and maybe it's a question I will answer on the podcast because maybe more than one person will have it. But that's why I wanted to mention that Angora um, question is just to bring up the guideline of if you wouldn't put it on your kid don't donate it but if you would use Angora for your child I would for my kids um, then go ahead and donate it that's totally fine so that's the rules you can knit um, or crochet or whatever anything you want for a child stuffies fine 
Um, I got an octopus that I'm going to show you today. So it doesn't have to be hats. It doesn't have to be booties or sweaters. I mean, anything that a new baby would like. Now, this is not a home for... It's not like a single mother's home where they might have kids already. Um, I don't think... I think it's only for pregnant women. And it's kind of... It's a type of home where, like, they're trying to help them get back on their feet or conquer addictions or whatever. So, um... I'm mainly concerned with newborn, you know, six month, 12 month sizes and anything for mama if you want to donate for mama because they're going through a tough time. Um, so that is what's going on. Um, I'm collecting, I'm checking the post office box as much as I can. This week I think I only checked it once. So if you don't see your items, they're probably waiting for me at the post office and I'm going to go there this afternoon. Um, oh, what should I Okay, it's only 10.45. Um, so I'm collecting all of the items for the week. I will show them to you on the podcast. And then I will update the tally. We also are keeping a tally of everything that's been donated. So you guys can see how much stuff we've already got. Um, I, I think it's so much fun to update the totals every week. And just see, I mean, you guys are incredible. So this is so much fun to do. I'm loving it. Um... I am getting more excited about this charity knitting drive than I am when I get yarn for myself, whether it's purchased or gifted. Like, this is just, I don't even know how to describe my excitement about this, guys. It is so much fun. So I just want to say thank you for contributing because I'm having a blast and this stuff's not even for me. Um, also, for all of those of you who have sent super sweet notes for me, I have a bulletin board next to my bed and I keep them all there and I read them all and I love all like so many of you guys have sent sweet words of encouragement um so I, I really appreciate that guys I yeah I love it so thank you for sending notes and thank you for contributing all right let's see what we got this week enough of the blabber um I think this week I only collected two packages because again I only went to the post office like once um and they are super sweet so i'll start oh they're gonna fall open up okay we have these three little crochet hats so there's one with a pom-pom and then two i can't hold them <laughs> where are you two with no pom-pom so look at how cute these are so fun so cute i like the one with the pom-pom because i love pom-poms um so there's three more baby hats to add to our total. This one, so these came packaged. She included labels as to what they are. So I'm trying to keep them together. Um, so this is baby hats and mitts. She even included like the care instructions. So this is acrylic. So she's like machine wash and dry. Um, and then she wrote a note to the new... You can't see it because it's blown out. She wrote a note to the new mom on the back. So I think that is so sweet. Um, so that's why I'm trying to keep these all together. But here's this little hat. It kind of reminds me of like berries. Um, I don't think it's, it's not charted. I think it's just how the self-striping yarn worked out. But it reminds me of like strawberry fields or something. And then there's two little baby mittens. Oh my goodness, guys. They're so precious. So like that. So they're gonna love it. So that was that one. There's also an octopus. And so again, she left a tag with a note to the new mom telling us what, um, what kind of yarn it is and the care instructions. Okay, so this is on my list of projects to learn how to make. Um, I can crochet like flat things. Okay, I can crochet with baby hats and blankets and stuff. But I've never tried following a crochet pattern for something like this. Um, and the octopus are really popular right now because the a lot of people make them for preemies in the NICU because the tentacles um, mimic the umbilical cord in the womb. So supposedly they are very calming to preemie babies in the NICU, you know, who want to feel that sense of being in the womb. And so they can kind of just grab onto the tentacles of the octopus. Obviously, you would take off this, um, the black string is just, 
it goes with the tag. So that's not part of the octopus. So I wouldn't give that to the baby, obviously. But if I hold it in the back, that's like what it would be for the baby. Now this one is super cool. There's even like a, it reminds me of a pig nose. Um, look at the detail on the underside of the octopus. Oh my goodness. So I've never seen that part before. Um, I don't know if it's, I don't know what anatomy part of the octopus it is, but I just thought that was so cool how it was done. I mean, she even did it in a different color and tied the little like French knots there. Super cute. So this is on my list of things to learn how to do. I, I love it. Okay, and then lastly, there's this neon hat and it cracks me up and I would totally put it on my baby because it is so bright and neon. Oh, look at this thing. It like, it really is that bright. It's like construction cone bright. And I love it. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's so, like, it's so bright. It really is. It's, it's getting blown out, but it really is that bright. Um, so I thought that was super fun. So that was all of the donations that we got this week. Um, I know there's like four packages at the post office waiting for me. I was going to try to go down and get them before I podcasted so I could show you guys on today's episode. But like I said, I'm trying to record when my parents aren't home. And so that would mean I would have to wait to record till this afternoon. And then my parent or my mom would be home. And it's just easier to do it when there's nobody here. So um, I know we have more stuff at the post office. I just haven't been able to go get it yet. Um... So next week I will have a lot more to show you guys as far as what we've got donated. All right, I think that is all for this week. We're at an hour, so I should probably stop talking and let you guys go. But um, yeah, don't forget if you have knit a sweater at all this year, even if you haven't knit it in the second quarter, um, if you've knit a sweater at all this year and you haven't yet put it on the finished objects page, go and do it. Um, and then I will draw a prize for it. Now, if you see this after the end of June, is it June 30th or 31st? I think it's 30th. Um, if you see this July 1st or after, go ahead and still enter your projects because I will just pick a winner from the next quarter. So without, that'll be July, August, September, the end of September. So um, yeah, works in progress are totally allowed. If you finish a sweater in 2017, put it on there and enter to win a prize. Um, and go check out the other podcasters who are doing sweater knit alongs too, and you can double your odds of winning. So I want everybody to have awesome odds to win prizes. Um, if you wanna knit something for a baby or for a new mom and you want a skein of indie dyed yarn in return, then please do. Um, we still have a month, over a month, to collect items. So I would love to see what you wanna make for a baby or a new mom. Um, yeah, I think that's all. You guys, oh, you can find me also on Instagram as Jessica Ruth Knits on Ravelry. I already said it's Sergeant Griff's Girl, so it's S G T G R I F F S Girl G I R L. I will try to put most of my project notes um, and update all of my current projects to be on there in case you have any questions about what yarn I used, what needles, or what the pattern is. Um, since I'm not able to put it in the down bar right here because I'm recording on the iPad. So that is all. I hope you guys have a fantastic week. Happy knitting and thanks for watching. All right, I'll see you all next week. Take care.